Hi everyone, it's Bethany, welcome back. In this video, I am going to create a card that is inspired by this brand new stamp set that was just released from Simon Says Stamp. I will definitely link everything that I'm using in the description box below this video, that way you know all of the supplies that I'm using to bring this together. So first what I want to do is I'm gonna open this up. I love the bouquet and I love all the sentiments. We have Happy Mother's Day, thank you for or thank you for everything, you are so special. Happy Mother's Day once more, just in a different font. Sending love, mom, you're the best and I love you. Then we have this really pretty Happy Mother's Day in more of a banner. It is so pretty. Okay, so what I'm gonna do really quickly is I am going to open this up and I think what I'd like to do is do some emboss resist. So I am going to bring my mini Misty in and I'm gonna put a piece of cardstock here. Now you could use watercolor paper if you like for this. I'm just going to use an 80 pound cardstock. I think it'll be just fine for what I'm doing. Okay, let me open this up. Okay, grab this beautiful bouquet and I'm gonna place it right on my paper. I am not quite sure if I want to cut this out. I'm not sure what direction I'm gonna take it so knowing that, I want to center this as best that I can, just in case I want to, in the end, keep this as my panel. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and close the door and grab my Versamark. And I also have some embossing powder in fine detail white that I'm going to use. So I'm just gonna ink up this stamp and then we'll get our embossing powder placed really nice on there. Okay, and we'll transfer that first mark over to our paper. Okay, and you can kind of see a little bit of my little outline there only because I've been playing around with this stamp set a lot and I've been trying to get it all clean from a previous ink that I used and it still, as much as I clean it, it keeps transferring. I've been loving this stamp set. So it'll be just fine. I'm gonna put embossing powder over it so we will just see white soon. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to re-stamp right in that middle part and that looks good, okay. Oh, holy guacamole, you know what I forgot to do? And I knew I would do it in the next video. I knew I would do it because I've been so good at it lately, but I forgot to use my anti-static powder. But you know what, I think it's gonna be okay just based on the technique I'm going to do, but we'll see. If not, we'll just re-stamp. Okay, I have my embossing powder all over the paper, and now I'm just gonna tap that off. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna add just a little additional layer Okay, and then I'll tap that off. And then if I have any extra, especially since I forgot my powder, I will get that swept away. No, I'm gonna redo it. There was way too much to sweep away. So I'm going to use my anti-static powder, and this is just going to make sure that my embossing powder, once placed on the paper, only sticks to where I placed the Versamark. So, because I can, I'm going to re-stamp that. Now someone told me I should put a little note on my Versamark that says embossing powder or anti-static powder. And I really think that after this video, I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna put a little post-it note right on there because I just, I just forget. Okay, there we go. That should be just beautiful, just like this. And I know right here, I need extra pressure for some reason. So that looks great. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put my embossing powder over that and we will melt it with my heat tool. Oh my goodness, so much better now that the anti-static powder was placed on the paper. So much better. So now the powder only is present where the glue was and that's how, oh, there we go. And the last time it was just all over the paper because it will stick to any oil or any static that's on there. So that looks much better. Okay, let me go ahead and funnel this back into my little jar and we'll heat this up. Oh 
Okay, so difficult for you to see because white on white, but that powder just became a nice glossy look and it's so nice. Okay, so now we are going to play around with adding some color all over the paper and we will watch because the color will only really stick to the paper. Stick really isn't the right word, but the color will only go on the paper and then it will resist in the areas where we have done the heat embossing. Okay, so I am thinking I will play around with a couple of my Simon Says Stamp inks. I have the color Cheeky and I also have Melon. And before I do anything, I will test these colors on a different piece of paper. That way I can just ensure that I really like the color combination. So I'm just gonna place a little bit on my mat here. And let me grab a scrap piece of paper. Okay, I also have just a little bit of water here. And I'm just going to add a little bit of water to the ink. And oh, that is so pretty. That is so, so pretty. I love that. That's exactly what I want. Okay, let me go ahead and do the melon as well. Oh, that is super, super pretty. I, I love them both. That's exactly what I want. And I can experiment with doing a little bit more, a little bit less, but I think this will be really pretty and fun. Okay, so what I will do, again, you can use watercolor paper if you'd like, absolutely fine. Um, I think this is gonna be fine just for the little limited amount that I'm gonna be doing. Um, so anyway, run with that in any direction that you please. But since I like how that's looking, I'm gonna come in with the cheeky. And I'm just gonna play around with adding color in bits and places all over my little bouquet. And as you can tell, and we will come back and kind of bump up these colors a little bit, but as you can tell where we're placing the color, it is really only being applied to the paper and then it's resisting in the areas where we have our embossing powder. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of add in random spots and then I'll fill in all the other little areas. I know it looks a little crazy right now. I'll fill in all of the other areas kind of with the, with the orange. Okay, so let me get that off. And really quickly, I wanna come in with the orange. Probably didn't need any more water there, but I'm kind of, I'm gonna overlap them and just kind of fill in wherever it's still white. Oh, that's pretty. And just really just take the shape of this bouquet. So I'm not gonna really do, um, you know, a rectangle. I might, I kind of have to just see. I just play and, and really see. And I'm gonna need some more of the melon. So I'm gonna add a little bit more here. And let's see, let's bring in some, ooh, we need to water that down just a little bit. There we go. Although I really, like how vibrant that is. Okay, isn't this fun? I think that's really fun. Now, I'll tell you why I decided to do something like this for this stamp. I think this is beautiful, but it is way too intricate for me to want to color today. Every once in a while, I'm really in the mood to color, but today I just really wanted to still have a colorful look, but I wasn't really wanting to, I don't know, get all the coloring out and be, be that still. I just kind of wanted to play some color, but do fast color and fun color. Isn't that neat? Okay, what I think I will do though, is I think I will take more of a rectangular shape. I'm gonna fill in these areas down here. That way, just I think it'll be more pleasing to the eye to do so. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of each color. So I'm just gonna add some cheeky here. Some more melon here and I'm just going to finish this up by bringing the color a little bit more down and off to the side and I think that will be nice in allowing just a little bit more I don't know more of a shape okay well I'm going to do more of the melon here and there's really no rhyme or reason. I also will go back in, I like that. It's kind of given it a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna go back in with my melon as well and just bump in, or bump up, bump up all of those little areas. Oh, I'm sorry, with the cheeky, the pink, the pink. 
So let's get a little bit more water there. Get some more. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna blend those areas, but also have some fun there. Okay, here. And again, I'm just going in and adding another layer. I wonder if I need to get some more. Another layer of that cheeky. And I love just kind of the, just the messy fun sides of this. I think that's really fun. Okay, let's, I'm just going to, for lack of a better word, because it's not about perfection, but I'm just gonna kind of perfect the sides a little bit. Just kind of add where I need to, but I think, I think that's really fun. Okay, the next thing that I think I will do is I'm going to bring in some more color once more. This will be kind of my final, my final step. Just like this. Okay. And then I'm going to bring my water in. I'm going to test over here. I kind of want to add just a little bit of yeah, I want to add a little bit of splatter and fun. So I'm going to bring in the cheeky and I'm just going to add a little bit of visual interest there. And it'll be better if you wait. I might need to dry it a little bit. If you wait a little bit for your background to dry, then your little dots will, or your splatter pieces will sit on top instead of sinking into your little watercolored areas. So I might let that dry for just a second and then I'll add a couple more little spots, but it's gonna look really cute. Okay, I think that's dry enough. I really, literally, it dries so fast. I, I, I think I waited 30 seconds. Okay, bring in some more. Just want to make sure that I really see that color. That's fun. Okay, and now I'm gonna move on to, let's move on to the melon. And get some of this water off over here. And I'll add just a little bit of the melon as well. Okay, I'm gonna stop while I'm ahead. I think that looks really great. I'm going to remove any remaining ink and we will continue on. Okay, so while I was waiting for that to dry, which didn't take long at all, I noted that I had this beautiful die from Simon Says Stamp in my collection as well. This says, I adore you. And I thought this would be really pretty on this card. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So let me go ahead and get this cut out. I think I'll do it in white. I think that will be really pretty. I also could do it in gold, but let's see. Why don't we try both and see what we like? Okay. So I went ahead and I cut everything out. I have three of the white and then I did an additional in the gold. And so we'll see, we'll see what we like. I, I really feel like I could go either way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to stack these one on top of the next. So let's see, this goes this way. Is that right? Oh, let's do it this way. And I'm going to use some of the Gina K connect glue. I've really fallen in love with it. And I'm just gonna stack all these up. So I'm gonna take my little eyes and use a little stamp block. And I'll just kind of hold that into position and get that really pressed down as I go. So I'll go through and just glue all of these little pieces together and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, and the best thing about the liquid glue, because you could use spray adhesive, of course, but I like how the liquid glue, especially with dainty things like this, gives you time to just get it all moved into place. It's very forgiving. So I can just kind of wiggle it into place. I can kind of maneuver it with my tweezers just to get it pinched right where I need it to be. And then that looks really nice. Okay, so I'm going to let that sit as well, and I'll finish all these up. Okay, I am all done stacking my die cuts and getting them all glued. So let's see here. I'm gonna bring my little panel back in and I wanna see where I wanna go with this. I see, I really like the white. I think that is super pretty because I think what I'll do is stamp a sub sentiment in black right underneath this. And I want to do the little bottom right justified. I think that'd be really pretty. 
I'm really liking that. I think that's really pretty. Okay, but let's see what this would look like as well. Oh, this is gorgeous too. I adore. And then you. That is so pretty too, because it's really, it really pops. Well, I think we should go with the gold. I think the white is gonna get too lost. And then I, I originally was gonna just stamp right on, you know, I still could, and then I could just heat emboss. Mm hmm I really could. I could just heat emboss right on the paper there. So maybe what I should do, well, let's, let's start by, let's get everything glued together. So I'm gonna add this top layer with this gold. So in the end, I did three layers of white, one layer of gold, and that is just gonna look nice and just really, I like how kind of chipboard like that is. I think it's really pretty. Whoops, stuck to my finger there. I think it's really pretty and it just really adds some fun dimension. So one thing that I was just thinking is with you know a stamp set like this, let's bring it in while I'm finishing the glue up. With a stamp set like this, I love how this doesn't necessarily have to be Mother's Day. Um, I think this is, it's just so pretty. And especially when you, you pair it with another sentiment, like I adore you or, um, sending love that could be just encouraging and it, you know, do a little bit more of an encouragement note. I like that. Thank you for everything. You're so special, not necessarily for mother's day. Again, it could be something that's encouraging or, you know, a thank you note, something like that, or simply mom, you're the best. So if you skipped the little, um, happy mother's day sentiments, which if you're making this for mother's day, then that's absolutely beautiful but I'm trying to explain how this could be more of a year-round stamp set because a bouquet of flowers obviously everyone needs flowers all year round but paired with the right sentiment and you could easily use this stamp set all year round especially with just a simple I love you I love that this could be Valentine's Day all the things so do birthday. I'm going to let this set for just a second. And in the meantime, what I'm going to do is grab my A2 layer dies because I want to trim this down just a little bit. And I'm thinking, I was thinking of going one layer in, but I kind of think I'll do two and really kind of frame out pretty. And I, you still get all the little speckles from the splatters. I think that's going to be really pretty and nice. So let me, let's tape this down and let's see, make sure that that is final answer. Okay. I think that'll be pretty. And I will go ahead and just run this through. Actually, I'm going to bring it down just a hair, just a hair. I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine and then we are in the home stretch. Yep, I like that just a tad better. Okay, I'm just gonna angle that. That way it just runs through a little more gracefully. And let's trim that down. Plus it will flatten out my panel just a little bit. It was a tad warped from all the water. But running that through helped and I'm gonna put foam tape on the back which will further help. Look how pretty. I love that. That's so pretty. All right, let's decide on our sub sentiment because I think we're gonna need to get that done first because I think I'll do heat embossing with some gold. So I don't know that this will be the perfect color match, but I'm gonna do the ultra fine gold by Simon Says Stamp. I think it will be a better match for um, the, the beautiful gold we did with the I Adore You. I adore you. Okay, let's put this in here. And I wanna just do it right on the panel. I think that will be pretty. So I need to just get everything kind of placed. I think I wanna do mom, you're the best. I think that would be pretty. And it's so dainty and little. So mom, you're the best would go there. So what I'm gonna do is get that placed and make sure that I like how everything else kind of goes with it. So I'm gonna put everything Ooh, maybe I'll do something like this. I'm gonna put everything down. And of course, not 
I'm not doing anything here. I adore you. That is pretty. And then that bouquet is just kind of our beautiful background. I adore you, mom, you're the best. And then, a, you know, that, that may all come down. I might move this over here, actually. I think it just accompanies it a little bit better. So I'm trying to get this not to stick to me. Yeah, because if I do it a little bit closer to the bottom, I can bring everything else back down. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna take these off, put these up here, and then I am just going to nudge that right where I want it make sure it's nice and straight, which I think it is. I think that's even straighter. Okay, so let me close that. And even on the door, I can just straighten it. Okay, because we have those lines, those grid lines on the misty door. And I think that looks really good. Okay, so let's not ruin this at the last moment. Let's definitely remember anti-static powder. So we've been handling that paper quite a bit. Okay, and then I'll bring my Versamark back in. And let's pray this works because we're doing this right on the panel. Ah! Right on the panel, okay. Okay. Mom, you're the best. I think I'm just gonna do that one time. And it's very dainty, so I'm just going to just press down with my finger. I'll take a look. Mom, you are the best. I think it worked. I think so. Okay, so let me add the powder. And you could also stamp this in black. It would be pretty. I just kind of wondered if the black may clash with the gold. I wasn't really, really, I wasn't really feeling it as much as doing just a gold embossing powder. Ooh, that looks really nice. Okay, I do need to just brush away a little bit, as you can see, a little bit of my powder got here. And that could very well be because my paper may be a little bit still wet even though it is you know very dry to the touch you never know if you have just a little bit of moisture still in that in that paper that looks really nice okay I'm not going to add any more I think that will be wonderful and let's heat that up Oh goodness, that's so pretty. Isn't that pretty right there? I love that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start building this card up. Let's get the card base created and we'll be almost done. Okay, bringing in my little scoreboard here and I also have a 110 pound card stock. This is trimmed to 11 by four and a quarter. When we take half of 11, we are at five and a half. So that's why where we will place our middle score mark. And then we'll have our little top folding card, which I think is so, so pretty. So let me grab my bone folder and just really crease this down nicely. There we go. Pretty, pretty. And we'll do some foam tape and place our beautiful, beautiful panel right on our card. Oh, that's gonna be so pretty with that little white margin there. Okay, I had to pull a piece of pink because I just felt like I loved this, but we had the opportunity to do something a bit more. So I sized this at four inches, so four inches by five and a quarter, and that will look really great right under here. So I think I'm going to place that down, and I, I think I still will pop it up on a little bit of foam tape, and then what I'll do is I will glue this piece down to my cardstock. I think, or my card base. I think that will look really, really nice. Yep, final answer. Okay, I'm gonna open up my card, place that right over here. Let's place some foam tape down on the back of this top panel that we decorated so nicely. And we will not only get some dimension here, but help flatten this out. I could run it through my die cutting machine again, but foam tape is my absolute favorite for fixing a little bit of warping. Works like a charm. I also learned this from Kathy Zilski. 
she mentioned in one of her videos, I think that she did this, where if you have any extra pieces, you just put them off to the side of your foam tape. And it has really helped me make sure I'm using all of my materials because foam tape can be quite expensive. Okay, so let me go ahead and take my little backers off and we'll start with the pink piece. Actually, you know what I think I'll do is I'll actually place this on the card panel first because it's nice and flat. And I'll just do this with some tape runner. Okay, let's bring this in. Okay, I'm gonna position this. Again, I have that tape on the back. Well, that looks really good. Okay, so that piece is down. Then I'll just add a little bit of glue to the back here to give me a little grace when placing this down. That way it doesn't stick right away. Okay. And I'll just kind of center that. Oh, I think that actually looks awesome. Okay. And then it just flattens out so beautifully. Doesn't that look pretty? I am loving this. This is, this is so pretty. Okay, now I'll just decide on my little I adore you. And I think what I'll do is I will work from the bottom up. So from the U all the way up. I think that will just help me visually get everything where I need it to be. And then we'll be all done. Okay, and I think the die has the I over here. But as creatives, we can kind of make our own rules. I think I'm going to move it here because just with the placement, I think that looks a little bit better for my eye. All right, I'm going to make it official with a little pair of tweezers and some liquid glue. Okay, and my final little piece, which is the eye, will go right here. The more I look at this, the more I fall in love with it. And I love the fact that I had no idea where I was going to take this card absolutely no clue and I adore how it turned out. I love the warm tone of that gold with the beautiful cheeky color and the melon color. So pretty. Okay I was going to add a little sequins but I really think that the gold that's present on the card already I think it is enough and I really do think the gold that I chose for the embossing powder I think that matched pretty well to the gold cardstock that I used so I'm really happy with that I think I'll stop there I think sometimes you just have to hold back just a little bit and I just think that that's enough, right? I just think it's enough. So I hope you enjoyed this. This really came together so fun and beautifully, plus a little inspiration for other ways that you can use your ink pads. I really love that background. I think that's so fun. And I'm glad I went with the gold. I think given the daintiness of the actual stamp, I think the white sentiment would have just kind of, um, just disappeared into the background where I really like how the gold pops on top. So pretty. Be sure to check out all of the fun things that they have released in their latest release at Simon Says Stamp. They have so many beautiful goodies and I can't wait to see you next time in another video where I share more of the fun things they sent over. I, they just really did an amazing job with this release. Okay, be sure to check out the description box below because I have all the things linked for you and I'll see you in the next video.